right, guys. On this episode of the podcast, we talk about hit versus list. Uh, we also get into Happy New Year, uh, COVID lockdowns, and sporting events. Welcome, guys, to this episode of the Trainer Feed. Uh, I'd like to Here. have a special shout out to all of our new listeners and viewers. Thank you for joining, hopping on the on the boat. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe before we get into anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, Follow our number 129, 130, and 130. 130 something now. We're at 130s. 131. We're making our way up. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, for real. Happy New Year. 2021 upon us. Let's hope. Let's hope. 2020 is... First of all, did anyone see Andy Cohen last night on CNN? No. I was watching Univision. He... (laughs) He ripped uh, De Blasio. It's so funny because I think Andy Cohen. Yeah, because I think Andy Cohen yeah. and Andy Anderson Cooper were doing the, the were doing the the live presentations they always do on New Year's Eve, um, and then when the clock strikes twelve, they show a clip of De Blasio dancing, and then like a minute or two later, they go back to the two Andys, and then they're drinking, and then one's like, Ugh. he's like, yeah, that's how I felt watching De Blasio dance, and you're like. You might be out of a drop tomorrow. <laughs> no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah, but he, he like kept going. They're like, okay. And Anderson like, Cooper is he's the one that doesn't like to drink very much, but he just downs shit and then he's always like making faces drinking. Yeah, he was the one making the sound, and Andy Cohen was the one who made their reference, so it was kind of funny. Andy Cohen's yeah. fine. They no, were, he's it was just funny. But no um, one likes no one likes the Blasio. It's it's a whole. Thing. I know it'd be different if he was like, but uh, he because he also followed by saying he's like you know do something for this city and he kind of went on a little bit oh, and you're like shit. oh this guy is... <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they're like a anyway too much, a little too much coquito <laughs> yeah I think so so it was kind of funny but um some punch of rum punch yeah, of cream it. it's a lot different yeah. than what we did last year last year we were all together we hung out right mm-hmm. yeah. Was I with you guys? Yeah. Yeah, with your your buddy. Your buddy yeah. hopped on the... But you kept giving Josh. him... Are yeah, well, not? he was also waiting outside, not knowing you were coming out, so it looked a little sketch. You remember? Yeah, he just pulled up, like, behind yeah. the group. I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> and he's, so, he's a big guy. Josh, he's a big guy, like, yeah. Josh, what's up? He goes, oh, my God. He's a, he's a police officer in Queens. No, oh, Brooklyn, he is? Brooklyn. Queen police officer in Brooklyn, yeah. Oh nice, yeah. But he just he showed up. We're like, it was his birthday a couple, couple days ago. Oh nice, happy belated. Happy belated, Josh. He won't. And if he's a friend of yours, David, he'll probably have another birthday this weekend, right? Probably. <laughs> you, know, you know how they do. You know, how you guys do? go to bars thinking COVID doesn't exist. Yo, what? Facebook keeps suggesting me to add your whole family and friends on Facebook, David. Well, if you if yeah, you and your brother's act- got like three different IG accounts. What's up with that? <laughs> he does no, because when he was younger, he was just like making them. I guess I don't know because. I think what happened is he has maybe two Facebooks and like two IGs or three IGs. I don't know. Cause he would forget his passwords and he just wouldn't know how to, so he would just like keep making them. So I got to tell him about it. Maybe he was like six Adrian Bravo's out there. Right. IG is weird like that though, because I remember I tried to recover my password and it just wouldn't let me. Like, you want to know how through so many avenues for that shit. Right. Like it hack? doesn't it doesn't want you to log in. Like it doesn't want you to sign out first. I think that's what it is. I think the shit. first loophole is it doesn't want you to sign out and then it doesn't need you to sign in because they already know your information. They're just that's like, hey, you already have something linked in as opposed to you typing out your password. Let's just throw you in. So the hack is to go to Safari. If you go on, if you go on Safari, it's supposed to go to the Instagram app, and you go on Safari, and you say, "I've lost my password. This is my user." It will reset it because when you go to the app, it doesn't shit. It doesn't do shit. It mm. says, "Oh, we'll resend it," because Alfie has an Instagram account, and I was like, "Fuck, I forgot his password." I was trying to give it to Alex, and I was like, "I'm sorry, babe. Like, it won't let me. You have to use my phone." And long, I don't know how I figured this out. I think it's during lockdown, actually. That if you go to, the, if you go to Safari. And say you lost your password, and it gives you the reset, everything, boom, right there and then. But uh, um, so, what's Safari? The so, the Explorer page. Exactly. On your no one uses Safari, Jack. Are no. you? Do you have any problems logging into your app though? Nope. This okay, does... we're just 
Someone, someone is struggling, and your brother apparently has got 17 accounts because he can't log in. Maybe he should ago. listen to this. this Maybe he ago. should listen to this, and so he should learn how to use Safari because then he can take away those other 16 accounts. Um, yeah. Or you could just ignore him. You know? Why well, did anyway? No, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, I'm just joking. I'm joking. This gives us a good opportunity to plug DuckDuckGo. Y'all heard of DuckDuckGo? No. No. You gotta um, check out that was it the social that that Netflix documentary? DuckDuckGo. Social Go. Do- oh, the social dilemma. Right, and they speak about different web browsers that you can use in order to oh, prevent tracking it, of your data. Your information. And then, yeah, tracking oh, okay, of your data and all that stuff. So DuckDuckGo. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh-huh. One of my clients, I was asking, I was talking to one of my clients who's a he's a big like science guy, and like techie dude, and I, we were chatting about antivirus software, mm. and I told him what I had, and he's like, "Yeah, dude, you're fucked." <laughs> apparently, <laughs> he's like, apparently, what the one I have has been known or has been linked to Russian hacks or Russian developers. Damn. And or like, I'm like, well, I'm screwed. Oh, LimeWire fucked up. LimeWire like, was the one, up. huh? He turned it on. He got a blue screen with like codes. I'm like, what? Mom is like, get paso. Like, I don't know. Your mom's like downloading the cow the code to directions to the White House the <laughs> security bowl. <laughs> yeah, those there are different days. But yeah. we are definitely in an era and a half though, because I, I feel like after this after the first lockdown, we were thinking and using a lot of our devices a lot more. And it could swing one of two ways. One way is that when everything's back to normal, which it might be a while, but when it does get back to normal, we might just reject all of these devices and just want to spend time with each other and just use it, use the devices for, I think, the purpose, which was to communicate and just say, hey, I'm, out, I'm outside or, hey, I'm over here um, versus just commenting on everything. Or it can go the other way where we're completely adopting this thing into our lives to the point of no return. Uh, a buddy of mine just recently told me that his company just went completely remote, completely virtual. So all of his coworkers, everybody is just meeting online now and they could work remotely and from wherever they want to work and all that stuff, which is, you know, it's something that we're all going to have to battle with or, you know, come to terms with if we're going to see the the light, the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm There's gonna, a, I don't know. I hate that. Oh, well, I was going to jump in. There's a, a client of mine. He, his company, <clears throat> they've been sending out iPhones to all their employees because, or, or whatever devices, so to ensure that their device that they're being sent is explicitly for work. So it's, it's, and he was saying, it's pretty much the work's way of saying, the company's way of saying, we're not going to have you coming into the office or we're not going to be able to have you come into office spaces anytime soon. So this is to make sure that, you know, this is your device for work and whatever. So, um, I don't know. Alex was telling me how when um, Biden comes into office, I think on the twentieth, right, officially, that there's going to be she hears it's going to be a serious lockdown for two or three months. But I mean, look, if if you could say that it means everything is so much better in two or three months' time, I don't know. I mean, I my friends in the UK are telling me how bad it's gotten as well. Are there there they can only do go out for groceries now apparently unless you're um from uh um essential worker so i don't know it's- yeah, and it's hard to figure out what's better right because i was thinking that as well if you shut everything down for a couple of months then things can be better but that comes at a cost and that yeah. cost, like it's, it's mental difficult. health right and then there's no real tangible way of getting to that better because it means something different to everybody you know yeah. people have to lose their jobs people gotta you know, exactly i think the other thing as well i was saying to someone like i don't again when someone disagrees with some of these points i kind of try not to get into any arguments but um with these restaurants especially in house kitchen i'm sure it's the same but by you guys as well um these these guys have gotten really creative in terms of uh like building the outdoor spaces i think it's i think it's phenomenal and i i went we went to tacomba yesterday and they built the outdoor thing obviously angel we've seen it as well and then they've got the heaters or whatever the lamps and you're just like i mean i know it's not ideal but you're like kudos to these people these restaurants are just like fuck it we're still gonna make it you know and i think it's almost given this city a different kind of culture like i think de blasio said in the summer again i'm not promoting him 
said, oh, we're going to bring it back next summer, outdoor dining. It's like, how about you focus on something more practical right now <laughs> as opposed to talking about something in a year's time? Um, but it's, it's, it's cool, and I actually quite like it. And, I mean, today, yesterday wasn't too cold, and you can do it. But I can see why on a day, if it feels like it's below 20, it's not happening. But you just, yeah, you feel bad for those people that can't work, man. Like Alex said, she hopes that we do go into another lockdown. I mean, that's different because she will get paid and she'll get paid at a salary rate, right? For working Lulu and she'll be at home. Whereas us, like, I don't want us to shut down because I will go crazy. I will go, I will really struggle mentally. I know the days are starting to get longer terms of the light which is good but it's not gonna get enjoyable to be outside maybe till march but yeah i don't know i'm i'm kind of in the hybrid scenario where i don't i'm not in the gym as often Mm. um so i'm already used to i'm like kind of that turtle just just used to like hunkering so it wouldn't change too much for you though right it wouldn't because i'm just still gonna walk yeah and then i'm also kind of just set up to the point now where I'm expecting that it's going to happen just because you, you can't hope that things will just be better and think that that's a solid plan. Yeah. It's just got to yeah, prepare not... for if it's going to go down, at least I got this, at least I got that. So, you know, I saw I'm some people to... go on starting quick off. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm just not getting used to anything right now just because yeah. I know that it can just change at the flip of a switch. Yeah. And honestly, if it, I don't know. I, I was I talked to friends about sporting events and you think, when is it going to be the next time you see a sold out MetLife, right? And they hit know. me up. They hit me up for Yankee tickets. Like, hey, let's get this 2021 season started. Just lock it in, box tickets. The these these companies like StubHub and Game Time are like, we've missed you. And I'm like, well, yeah. I haven't been able to go to anything. So it's funny. They actually just mentioned um I saw this morning, the NHL, they're playing in about 10 days' time from now. They're starting this season. They're going to have two games in Lake Tahoe, outdoor on the lake. How fucking sick is that? That's cool. Can you – That's uh, in Lake Tahoe, can you go? I mean, I don't know how – They haven't outside. given – Yeah, I, but that's what I'm saying. You should be able to have a crowd. You should. Like, it's outside as long as you're socially distant. And that's where I think they were talking about doing – because uh, I know in some of the Canadian cities, they have like, let, let's say, for example, New York City. I think you have obviously the rink in Central Park, like on the one close to Fifth Ave, the Woman mm. Rink, whatever it's called. Mm. Then you have one at the top end of the park, right by 110. I don't know if that's been close to renovation, though. I think it is. But someone was saying, why don't you just have the New York Rangers play their game in Central Park? Like, you'd have an issue of crowd control, but you don't have any tourists. It's outside. You could, I don't know how you would charge them, but at least you could still keep the fan base entertained, you know? And that's, I don't know. That's going to fuck up those people who bike down that hill on one tenth at like 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I know. It might not be, it might not be, it, that, again, that might not be practical, but for example, on Long Island, you have tons of parks that you could probably do it. I'm sure, again, I'm sure the colder climates, hell, look, years ago they've done games at Levi Stadium in the middle of February in California. So they've done it. So, and I get it's just that's why the NFL has been able to do some of these places with fans because if it's outdoors, I understand that. I mean, apparently Dallas Cowboys had 30,000 fans at their game the other day. 30,000. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of people. So I don't know. That's I mean, look, here's my, here's my thought on that as well. If, if you want to go, go ahead. Would I go personally? Would you guys go personally? No. Not right now, man. I wouldn't either. But if someone wants to go, let them, right? I guess, but then that's going to that, – that's the, that's the issue, right? Because if people want to fly, you can fly. If you want to do this, you can do that. The issue is that that makes it worse for everybody else because then the infection rates go up, then hospitalizations go up, and then we who haven't done anything – uh feel those repercussions because now instead of you being able to work and go to the gym now you can't go to the gym because uh you know the infection rate is just too high and the the spread is too crazy no that's the point mate this this new strain and all that stuff i don't know let's not go down the rabbit hole of covid but uh yeah we We should just go right into like animal flow and how it sucks no let me stop so (laughs) let's get to the topic at hand which is uh 
high intensity interval Animal training. Animal flow is function, bro. <laughs> it's mad functional, bro. It's all that high, function. We should speak about fu- yeah, for all that function. All right, uh, high intensity interval training and then uh, low intensity steady state. So I guess before we even talk about what like pros cons all that stuff we should kind of uh speak about high intensity interval training what it is same thing with uh l-i-s-s or low intensity steady state as people know it by so i don't know who wants to step up to the plate and just drop bombs about hit. cardio that's spanish I think, I think david david could david's more of a hit guy no actually i think jock is more of a hit guy i might be more of a list guy david is more of a combination Hypers, yeah, yeah, I think, I guess. I mean, the hit stuff. I like doing hit just because I hate doing cardio, so it just gets me in and out. Because mm-hmm. um, you can set a time limit, and I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not the biggest fan of having someone do, let's say, 30 seconds of all out training or all out whatever, like swings or, or. Uh, what what else ball slams or sprints right not that you could sprint for 30 seconds but and then you know i've seen people do that and have their clients rest for 10 seconds and then do it again and it's like okay well my opinion in my per, per, you know personal experience it's i think it's better if you give them adequate enough time to rest so they can do the same thing they did again right so i'm a big believer of like 30 30 or 30 seconds on minute off so you could give me the same intensity you gave me the first time does that make sense? I see. Yeah, what you're I see. Yeah, go on, Angel. No, I was I was gonna make the point that if Mike was training you, Mike was a Tabata guy. I think AG is also a Tabata guy as well. Uh, I think so. They yeah. would murder you on a treadmill on oh, a yeah, bike. 100%. They'd be like, <laughs> yeah. and Tabata for you guys who don't know, it's uh like a two to one ratio. So twenty seconds on of hard work off. and then ten yeah. seconds off. Eight typically seconds. eight rounds as well, right, Tabata? And that's it. You know it's crazy. That's all it is. Tabata. That's it. It's how how long is that? Uh, four to four minutes. No. Yeah. Roughly. Right. Yeah. And then you have these classes that says Tabata, and it's like forty-five minutes. <laughs> so like... I do you remember, um, David? I think we did this uh, workshop. Coach Coach Dos Remedi- Remedios and yeah. in Brooklyn, and I think Angel. We I met fucked him. myself up the next day. How did you fuck yourself you. the next day? No, I, I, I don't. I don't know what happened. I got so injured because we did that, and then we went to the gym floor and we lifted more. Yeah, <laughs> we did all lifted. Yeah, <laughs> after a workshop, that was the smart. next day. My knee was like, "What?" I was like, was "Oh like, my up. god, my knee broken." Bad. You know how I feel. I have I still have pictures from that day. I'll, I'll send it to you. Guys. Yeah, send it because I can't remember when that was, but I think pictures um, of me, not you. Oh, okay. No, no worries. That you no, took actually, of me. <laughs> so, oh, no, I remember that now. And Dumbo, right? That was yeah. so funny because my, um, they, we were, that Dumbo studio in Equinox, the layout just isn't great and there's pillars, right? Like, you know, at 76th Street, there's pillars kind of in the in the studio and they put mirrors around it. And Dumbo, those pillars are like right in the freaking middle. And this guy's presenting it and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I can see well. Anyway, this dude stands up like right in front of us. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? This fucking guy, and he had an X on his back. Do you know who this guy was? <laughs> My mentor. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, why is this guy fucking standing in front of me? Does he not have spatial awareness? I was like, yeah. he was he doing that to like get at you, or was he just legit? No, I think he was genuinely just couldn't see, and it just happened mm. to be that it was in my line of sight, or whatever. So I thought it was funny that when I actually got to meet him, and I obviously have a good relationship with him, you know, it was just funny to to see. I was like, oh, I've definitely met this guy before, and that was him. So it's funny. Um, but what coach Doss spoke about or some of the take takeaways I remember him, um, stating were that walk to rest ratio, which you just mentioned, David, right? Some people in their clients or some people working out, they have three sets or three exercises and then 10 second rest. Is that something along those lines you mentioned, right, David, like an example, right? So mm-hmm. coach Doss really spoke about that walk to rest ratio. He said that two to one ratio is hard for many reasons. He said, one, if you have someone do, a minute's walk and then 30 seconds of rest, right? Let's say you did three exercises in that minute. He said, by the second, third minute, you're not able to complete that, all those exercises in that minute. You're fatiguing, you're taking a little bit slower. Let's say it was swings, pushups, and squats, right? I don't know, maybe by the, by the second, third minute, if you're meant to do 10 of each, maybe you've only got to five. So he spoke a lot about, okay, now that walk period is eating into your rest period. So if you had the 30 seconds of rest, now it's more like 20. 
oh, guess what? Now you've had less time to recover from walking even longer. So he's, he, do you remember that, David? He really spoke about having more yeah. friendly walk to rest ratios. And it was maybe some of the like more, two to one to one yeah, rest to walk, like, right? Like that, yeah. Yeah. So he said, walk slowly for a minute to walk a two minutes of rest. And he really spoke about that. And he got very um, creative of how to do exercises with just one dumbbell, one kettlebell on a bands. And he was like, it was very, but it was very, he went into the sciences of why, oh, and, and, um, the failed applications of that walk to rest ratio of your rest being significantly less than your walk. Yeah. So I because, thought he was really yeah. good with that. Go I on, think dude. too, it just, I think has to do with, I mean, the point of high intensity intervals is what for you to do a hundred percent, go all out for whatever amount of time. And if you don't give them enough rest then they really won't be able to get to that threshold anymore. That's the point. So, I mean, yeah. What's your, I your think completion... it's as efficient. Yeah, um, shooting yourself with, with the efficiency. And you get hurt. I mean, if you see these people that are doing wads that are like, well, it's like uh, like 30 seconds, like all out snatches, and then you do a active recovery of double unders for 30 seconds, and then you go back to doing a five rep max, and it's like, okay. Those people who do that are absolute tanks and machines. It's crazy. But I think it can be said... And I remember when I've gone to classes like that, I'm thinking, like you just said, I'm doing a five arm max, five rep max and squats. Then I do double unders, which I can't do. I still can't. Then I do toast a bar, which whatever is fatigue and is, is consuming. And then I'll do some squats or, or, or lunges. Or I think about and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, this is just relentless. And the aim is to have no rest, but your body has to take rest at increment periods. So like a 10 seconds here, or 20 seconds there. So it's, I never was, but then again, I think I'm sure those who are in that form of training said it's an adaptation to build that tolerance to be able to work at that capacity with those loads. I think that's a fair, a fair point, a fair point to make as well. Um, and David touched upon a very key point with high intensity. It's not to say that everyone who does high intensity follows suit, but it has a high risk for injury, right? It's um you're yeah, i mean i think i think we can all agree that once you're fatigued your form goes out the window mm -hmm. yeah you can without you even trying like if you try so hard not to get your form to like go off it's gonna happen regardless so is it worth it you know I mean, that's that's kind of like my thing like is it worth it for you to risk injuring yourself and then being sidelined for a couple of weeks just because you want to sweat mm. you know it's i don't know or you could do it in a safe way and get the benefits of it, which, which you know, I, I think are great. I mean, there are a lot, there are a lot more studies now coming out in terms of, in favor of LIS, right, of low mm -hmm. intensity. Because I think there was a period of time where, hit was the biggest thing, and they're like, you it know sells. what, you know what, low, low, low intensity steady state, you don't got to do it, blah blah blah, because it burns, you get into a catabolic state of your muscles, and it's like, you know, bodybuilders and strongmen they hate doing it because they don't want to lose their gains. But I think now a lot more reach is coming out in terms of just helping you recover for the next training session mm. lis could be very beneficial that's what i mean that's what i've read angel yeah, I, chip in. Okay. yeah I was just gonna say um just to kind of like get everybody under the same umbrella that hit is more hit and uh list the two differences or the biggest difference is kind of like the time variable so hit would be something that you would do for a shorter period of time and get the amount of work that you need to get done in a smaller period of time total versus less, which is, you know, it takes a lot longer um, for you to uh, have similar adaptations. But the argument for less or the argument for hit versus less is um, some people say that you can have more adaptations. So not only are you improving that aerobic system, but you're also making, uh, I'm sorry, the anaerobic system, but you're also helping the aerobic system. Uh, whereas with LIS, you might just be focusing on one system, which is the aerobic system. Uh, and it takes a little bit more time for you to get into, which leads into the other thing about Tabata. So I think the argument for Tabata um, is that you might not have the same form. Definitely, I think quality of the repetition goes out the window. Um, however, the energy system development, I think similar to Jacques' point, uh, where you have these people be like, quote unquote, tanks or machines, comes with their energy system development, right? So when you're looking at a program, sometimes you look at movement and movement quality. Other times you look at energy systems and the development of those energy systems because not everybody focuses on that. And some people just can't, you know, walk for shit for a lack of a better term, right? Like they're walking, they're out of breath, 
but they can slowly control a squat or slowly control um, a pigeon pose or whatever it is, right? They, they have a high quality of movement, but the energy system demand just isn't there. So when you want to develop or condition the, the energy systems, it's important to diversify cardiovascular program with um, HIIT, um, sometimes Tabata. Um, but I prefer as well, I prefer like higher work, no, higher, lower work to rest ratios. So I'm, I'm not necessarily the Tabata dude, but I did a Tabata workout the other day and I knew by the end of it, like I was just all fucked up. I did it on the, uh, the assault bike. So oh, you uh, have it in the apartment, don't you? Yeah. So I got the assault bike hooked up, ready to go locked in. <laughs> David's like, wait, wait, what? Wait, I, what? I, got a, I got a setup now, but don't, don't. Oh. And you don't I invite anyone? You. Yo, screw you. I told you I'm ready for this next lockdown. You can't wait he for it. He wasn't kidding, was he? De Blasio got his head up his ass. I, I hate cardio, <laughs> but I love the assault bike. Yeah, they so so I did a Tabata workout there. And like when in regards to managing your injuries while doing some workouts like that, I definitely wouldn't recommend Tabata of snatches. But if you're locked in on an assault bike, there's only so much that could go wrong. True, mm. things can still go wrong. But you want to try to mitigate that, especially Limitized. when you're talking. That's my about other point too. Clients, it's like right? when it comes to Tabata, it's easy. It's, I think you can do it a lot safer. I mean, it, unless you're doing box jumps and snatches and things like that in the same workout in a Tabata style, that's a lot. I think a lot more risky than we could, being on a salt bike for Tabata. You know? mm, I think yeah, that's a great point with mitigating the risks, and also if you're someone who's very comfortable and able to do some of these skills you mentioned i completely agree that snatches are definitely way more of a risk than like like the bike um and it's all about there's so many variables in this and some of them we can touch on are the variable of weight and time right if you were if you're someone who's only ever done a handful of snatches in your life now you're going to do it in an in a high intensity format what that's like a lot to ask for and the risk of injury is significantly increased but if you're someone who's been snatching for years and you're pretty skillful with it, and you do it, you're comfortable with doing it at the weights, it might be a little difficult. 100% it's a great adaptation. You're not used to doing it in that kind of format. That's all relevant, right? And if you're someone who's, again, if you're doing it just to get the kick out of it versus someone who actually has a performance trajectory where they're trying to get into some kind of competition, like, and it's all, it's all relevant, right? But I would say that, and we've most definitely talked about this kind of variability in training and programming in the past where, you can, if you're able to do, let's say 50 pound, or hundred pound dumbbell goblet squats, four by 10, easy. Okay. Now you want to do an AMRAP, right? Say, let's say as many rounds as possible in 20 minutes. You can modify that because the, the rest ratio is altered. If you're doing four by 10 with a minute rest between now you're having pretty much no rest or three exercises between as active rest, modify it. I mean, you get five. It's, I'm so glad we're talking about this because I actually on Wednesday, um, I worked out with Alex. Well, we did our own exercises, but at the same time, we did a 25 minute AMRAP, right? And we don't, and then we don't have much space in our apartment, but we said, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, whatever. And it's so funny because I'm so guilty of choosing a program or choosing exercises before the workout. And then either realizing at the end or during you're like, fuck my life. I really underestimated how taxing this would be. But as you mentioned, if it's a time thing, and that's something that I think can be a winner when we talk to clients is I don't have the time to, because especially as the, the method we approach, the method of approach with them is to have some movement prep, to have some cool down, right? To not just throw your body into it and be like, all right, let's go. 20 minutes. I can go. Right. You just want that your weakness. Show me. <laughs> you, want, you want to really make sure your body is getting is in tune and warmed up for the, for the exercise you're doing. So if you take that into consideration and I know, um, you know, that takes time. If you take 10 to 20 minutes and if you take more time, that's fine. That's encouraged. So you can see why the pushback would be, I don't have time, you know, to do a 30 minute warm up and then an hour workout. That's an hour, not, that's time out of your day. Right. And then you got to consider you would encourage healthy eating as well. So like, what's that like a two hour window at Equinox when I was at 76th street and definitely more so before we had the dog, I gave myself, I try to give myself a two hour window of eating uh, sorry, of like the walking out, eating, clean up, get ready. Like an hour was always a little tight because I never got everything I wanted to do and I never got to eat before my next client. But the point I'm trying to get at is if you can program efficiently in a 20 minute period, that's one of the advantages of doing high intensity, right? Like you get 
I've, I've, if you look at the volume of training you were going to do, whether it was just a regular hypertrophy format, scaling it back, you can get a lot done in 20 minutes. And that is, I think, why a lot of these group fitness classes and places which we hope will open, you know, when everything gets back to normal, have the big crowds that they do. Because if you're a New Yorker, you want, a New Yorker, I think, wants three things for the price of one, or they want as much as they can in that hour, right? If you've got the hit, if you've got the kettlebells, if you've got the core, if you've got the bike, and I love fitting room, I love it. If that's an example of fitting room. It has everything you'd want, right? The one thing I have, the one thing where we mentioned about snatches is, if you're, if you're going to a class, and I'm not saying this is fitting room, I'm just saying in general, right? If you go to a class and you're not familiar with kettlebell swings or snatches, and now it's expected to do it in a high intensity form in a class where things are just go, 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 that's maybe not the safest option. So that's where I sort of draw the line where I've gone to classes and I know a swing, I know a snatch. So I do, I'm fine. But in my head, I'm thinking at the time, I'm like, well, I'm fortunate, but I'm sure that if someone is like, that's where... I don't know. There's gray areas, but I think that can be a bit of a, um, that's a bit of a risk with high intensity and look, it sells, right? Like you come out, you're sweaty and you look and you, and that's sometimes a misconception. I'm sure Dave, we've spoken about this in the past where just because you feel like you worked out hard doesn't always necessarily mean it was the best workout or don't confuse yeah, the versa. fact with, yeah. And don't confuse the fact that, Oh, I did an hour of training and I didn't sweat anything. Doesn't mean, Hey, you might have significantly worked on your motor skills. It just because you're not sweating doesn't mean things aren't working. And I think that's where some people or clients will say, I don't feel it here. I was like, trust me, if you're hinging, your glutes are working. Your hamstrings are working. Just because you don't feel like those muscles and surrounding... Um, if you do yes, a bridge, you're not only going to feel your glutes. I mean, you know, it's like... Your they have to turn working. on to work. Exactly. You know, they it's have gonna to. It's going to happen. I don't know. Sorry, I went off a tangent there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. I think uh, you made a good point about hiss, uh, which is that high intensity steady state. So that's like the hybrid of the two. And that's what yeah. you most commonly see in those uh, fitness classes. Because if you're actually doing hit, um, you're not going to be able to last 60 minutes. The idea for hit is that you're done quickly. Um, and if you're not, minutes, yeah. yeah, and if you're not done within that time period, you're not working hard enough. Right. So you might have to change the intervals or you might have to change the, the tool that you're using to something heavier or something with more resistance. Uh, but you typically see hiss in a lot of these group fitness classes because you're right, it sells. And then the modality as well as the instructor becomes very, and, and also the room. You can make the argument that if a room is not well lit or doesn't have enough mirrors, uh, no matter how good of an instructor you have, they don't have, you know, X, uh, not x-ray vision, night, night vision. I mean, if they got x-ray vision, they're probably not a group fitness Even better. They probably work at TSA. But uh, they don't have the, the setup in order to facilitate a good movement for X amount of people, 15 people, 30 people, whatever it is. So typically you see that, um, you see hiss in those group fitness settings and it is important to mitigate safety when it comes to that stuff too. So if you get out of those classes and you feel banged up, um, you should know that maybe it, maybe it was the movement, but maybe mm. it's also just not either the right setting or the right instructor or the right class for where you're at right now. Um, and I think David is really good with coaching people through movement quality. And I feel like if somebody's starting off with uh, no awareness or a lack of awareness in their movement, working with somebody like David to get that foundation really helps with uh, setting that foundation first. And then you're able to start implementing strategies for uh, energy system development, such as his hit or list. Um, I was also going to make the other point that you can't really sell or it's hard to sell lists in a mm. group setting. So hard. So, um, I don't, I don't know. It's but well, it's Unless you're like a running coach and have like an outdoor in, running club. Would you, I might be completely wrong in saying this, but would you say something that can be confused as well is that even though if you're like you said, in that group setting, we're training setting and you're technically doing hits, there's somewhat a little bit of list going on. Right, to an extent, because you're even though you take a breather, the fact that your heart rate still elevate, you're constantly doing a bit of moving. So that's, I think it's it's, and I have definitely made this mistake in the past where it's not as if to say, oh, you rested for two seconds, you're out of the hiss cycle, you're into the list cycle. Like it's not, oh, you're not on a treadmill, you're not doing any list because you're not on a treadmill. It's not, it's it's more broad than that. It's there's some more uh, gray areas between the two. So that's. Right. And, and, and it's, and it's also when people confuse about the fat burning zones. I mean, you, 
you're always burning some fat. It's just like, and it's harder to depict. I had the list earlier today, walking from the train to work. Exactly. There yeah. you go. That's list. It's for, um, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, but what I was trying to say is it's not always that clear cut with something, right? And um, there's yeah, some places crossovers. like Orange Theory that are promoting the fat burning zone. Because it sounds better and it sells better. Right. If you're going to say, hey, come move with us for 40 to 60 minutes and at about the orange zone. at 40 to 60% of your heart rate max, you're like, and it, again, it's all to do with like how it sells and unfortunately, but I agree with what you're saying, right? Where it's just that assumption that it's not, I, I'm not sweating and I'm not, I'm not making changes. And it's so, it can be really hard to drive that point across to um, people in this industry or learning in this yeah. industry, right? Because it's so not always about, and I, I always reference um, Michel Dalcour's lecture when he spoke about training the four quadrants of the loaded linear, unloaded linear, loaded multiplanar, unloaded multiplanar. And like, we all spend way too much more time in the loaded linear. Like we don't spend enough time. And I think that's just something as well that goes into that is how can you, how would you do it this differently, you know? And um, again, it's being okay with the fact that you didn't get a complete sweat up. That's totally fine. I think it's all, and, and, it, and I, again, when I learned some of this stuff and I started applying to the list, I was like, oh, I don't really feel like I'm working. So I, even me as a fitness professional who understood did struggle a little bit to get over that concept. And that's my someone, bench up without sweating a, a, a drip. That's, what, that's, that's part of it, right? You know, I uh, sweat a little bit, but you know. What is it up to now then? My bench is so weak right now. I PR'd at 265 for Wow. One. Damn, I, I'm I'm so weak at bench. I'm not even going to admit how weak It was because fucking Greg. I was supposed to do 255, and I got, I got Greg to spot me. Hey. He's like, he's like, he's like hey, you going to put more weight? I'm like, <laughs> sure, add five pounds. And I'm like still on the bench, like, all right, getting ready. You press more. And then, and then he's like, all right, let's go. I'm like, all right. Ugh. And then I get up, I look at the fucking thing, and it's 265. I'm like... Thank you, but I hate you. You know, like that's good. That's today. how I found out the PR. But it was cool. Today? Yesterday. I finished off the new the year. So I could start my new program with those numbers. Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome, man. Shit. My band. She oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, I think I on one day, man. <laughs> He's one of the most entertaining characters ever. I'll never I'll never forget this guy in a call when someone one of those prank calls called him. He was like, Listen, you don't understand what kind of the position I'm in right now. And they kept going on. He's like, no, 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 no. Clearly you don't understand what I'm going through. And it was just hilarious. But I didn't want to detract. Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, that's, that's it. That's a uh, hit <laughs> versus Liss versus his. I would say uh-huh. Liss, Liss has been shown to improve blood flow through your muscles and help you recover. And lower your and, and blood pressure as well. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, they have a lot of benefits for it. And I, I totally believe that, it has benefits for you getting stronger because again, it could help you recover for your next workout helps with, you know, heart disease and risk and makes you feel good too. Like the endorphins that you get, especially from doing like a bout of, of low intensity state. So I think even if those benefits are there, then I think it's definitely beneficial for anyone to do it. Yeah. And you can make the argument that, um, doing less might be better for somebody who's, uh, just starting out and trying to get their form before they're able to do hit or before they're able to do hiss. Uh, but definitely still have that foundation and carry that through. Like, I think that there's a place in every program for some energy system development and maximizing energy system development or balancing that between quality of movement is always Mm going to be a part of the process as well as, you know, to supplement your resistance training. Cause to David's point, you want to increase blood flow to the muscles and you want to increase uh, heart rate recovery mm-hmm. uh, when you're doing your lifts because then that, that could maximize what your workout or your training sessions will be consisted of, right? If you're only able to do, I don't know, God knows, like six supersets within a given workout within 60 minutes, you might be able to squeeze in a seventh if you start to work on your energy system development and work on your recovery between sets. Um, things like that. I think that Just that definitely helps. <laughs> I, I think also ultimately is having that relationship, the healthy relationship with the exercise is also yeah. something that can get overlooked. Like don't do something that's going to, there's a fine line between 
doing something that makes you so miserable and you hate it and something that you know a greatest fan but you know the huge benefits that can be a fine mm. line there right so we can say foam rolling right i don't know who wants a foam roll? who wants to be like oh i love foam rolling right i okay so you're one of the few people i know that says that so <laughs> it's not well, let's be honest clients how many of our clients go oh my god i can't wait to foam roll three out of how many five <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> and like he's looking up there, like someone's like telling. Me. Right. Uh, well, the point so I was trying to make. Mother. It, show the mother. The point I was trying to make is not that common, right? But but we know the bottom. But again, without contradicting um, any science, is that for the most part, there's a strong relationship with foam rolling and feeling better and posture looking better, right? So along those lines, and the point I'm trying to make is that that that's one thing whereas if you some of the studies of high intensity will say that like what's the level of enjoyment some people love that feeling right some people hate it and like, if you hate it you know we mentioned there's a higher increased risk with his but it's not to say that you're going to get injured by doing it it's just an increased risk and as angel you pointed out if you're someone just getting into working out and strength training and movement in general this is amazing like it the fact that there should be more there should be healthier um, rapports and relationships with just the fight moving like that's a big deal and i know if you're listening you might be a fitness professional you might be, you might be of someone of a higher intensity but if you're working with clientele that might be the biggest hurdle for them is just to move and i think that that was some of the breakthroughs i've had of clients previously was like what is what would be you know they're coming in twice a week and they're only coming to see you what would be a huge goal for them to come in that third day by themselves and like just do a bit of everything like i don't that's fine even if it's 20 minutes the fact that they're creating that habit to come into the gym to, to put the work in, to cool down, that habit they're creating is huge. That They've gone from doing two days of working out a week to three or four. And it's not as if it's something they're going to struggle to keep in their schedule, right? Like That's something obviously with lockdowns has either made things harder or easier with that. But I think, I just think long, long story short, the list can be a big game changer, especially if you're finding the struggles for the habits. Um, and I think, make it make it easy make it smart right make it 10 minutes and may, and set yourself up with great uh action steps such as i'm gonna bring my ipad right so you don't even think you, that's been a huge success for some of my clients as well as you don't want to do it there's ways of doing something without being so consciously aware of what you're doing and it's not cheating it's just getting you in the rhythm of doing it right like put a podcast on or like if you have the podcast you know you're gonna like listen to feed. Like the training feed, 100%. You can be doing your cardio or listen to this. And you're like, fuck me, man. It's like deja vu. But if you have, but, it, but it's all about having that set up to begin with, right? So my, my example was with Liz on the bike or something. I'm like, what can I watch on Netflix? Narcos was a great example I'd watch on, Netflix, on the cardio, right? Because I was like, that's something I love. It's pretty mindless, at least for me. Let the record show Jacques likes narcotics. <laughs> 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 that's 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 the man that's mandalorian's uh big biggest role right yeah yeah pedro I, pascal i watch oh, uh, okay i don't know what you mean i watch um whatchamacallit vrv so i i have a vrv and Crunchyroll subscription so i choose some anime and i just lock in and i just well i used to when i used to be able to go to the Gym so, yeah. the elliptical when elliptical I used elliptical. to do when I used to get being a stepmaster, I would put on Breaking Bad. There you go. That's how long. Mm -hmm. That's how long it was. No, but now Vikings is back. Let's there go. you go. That's your thing, and it's all about finding that thing. And you're you're familiar with it. I just think that's a big breakthrough in terms of lists because it can be boring. I think yeah. with Anthony as well, when he would do like every day, he had something he would go to and he would watch, or he had mm -hmm. motivational listening he'd listen to. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all about, and it's also. Funny, I mentioned I worked out Alex earlier this week where the music she listens to when she walks out, I can't walk out with that music. I just is not motivating. It's not the rhythm. She work out with like Equinox music, like quote unquote Equinox music. Somewhat ish, yeah. I Whereas can't. I, I gotta, can't. I gotta listen to some dun 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 dun, and then Dave has got all the classic got... rock usually, right? There we go. You know, yeah, like Abba and some Wham, you know. <laughs> So it, but that's, that's part of it as well. If you have a, I don't know, that's just bit. And, then, and also that I'll tie in without rambling too much to the style of training you're doing. If you're doing, for example, when I put touch earlier on 
unloaded multiplayer movements. So for me, that typically is a lot of animal flow. That's something I like to do in that period. I know like how many episodes can you mention animal flow? Well, here's another one. Sorry guys. So for me, if I'm doing animal flow, for example, the style of music is usually lo-fi. Lo-fi beats, love that stuff. That stuff is just... The it, hell is lo-fi beats? I don't know what that maybe is. Maybe people say lo-fi, but I think it's lo-fi beats. But what is it? It is lo-fi. It is lo-fi. Okay, thank you. Mm. It's just a genre of music, and it's kind of somewhat classical. And s- How like you describe it, Angel? Coffee shop music. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 100%. But say, it's very... Animal flow to Beethoven? Nah, it, it, there's a little bit of like jazz and but it's very I, I like, mean, smooth. Yeah. But anyway, that kind of stuff. And it's so funny because when I did the when I did the the workshop instructor, that's what he played. And I was like, oh shit, this is exactly the kind of thing that's God. in line with a tempo and the movement. Whereas if I'm lifting of kettlebells or swings, it's got to be heavy. But that's just a to each their own. Pause. If you got a fedora, you listen to lo-fi. Yeah, if you see someone like crawling around the rooftop, you it's could lo-fi. imagine I'm probably listening to lo-fi. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. What's that guy listening to? It must be lo-fi. I mean, I listen to the same thing every day. You love Pearl Jam, don't you? Pearl Jam. Yeah, I feel like I see that in your stories a lot. It's yeah. So, it's amazing. I don't know. Like, it's just a very, I get a euphoric feeling listening to them. It's great. That's but, good. Um, to each his own. Yeah, to each their own. I'm glad we touched on this. I know Georgine wanted to talk about it. But so I think, should we wrap it up in summary and saying there are definitely advantages to both and disadvantages to both? Not disadvantages, but like maybe some associated risks. Um, And ultimately, I think it's fairly healthy to say that having a bit of both in your program is like the safest way. Like if it means... I don't think it'll hurt. It will not hurt your chance. 100%. You have advantages to unless you. I mean, unless you're changing your entire workout training method to like, okay, I'm going to run a marathon. Then okay, then yeah, you're gonna lose your strength and you'll lose stuff if you don't like keep it up. But I think it'll I don't, I don't think it'll hurt. There are lots of fewer goals too, right? I know bodybuilders don't typically do high intensity because of the the calorie consumption and the in the style of training it is, but I think um it's all depending on your goals. Yeah. Hundred percent. I agree. All right. So maybe we'll just wrap it up here, keep it short and sweet. Uh, thanks to our listeners. Thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. Make sure to follow David at his Instagram, which he doesn't know. <laughs> I think we figured that out last episode. Uh, follow the trainer feed. And that's it. See you guys it's next coach, week. It's Coach D Bravo. Fuck. <laughs> coach underscore D Bravo. There you go. There you yeah. go. That's it. All right, guys. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. All right. See you soon, guys.